Got to get the sound sample so they can remove that background. Hope you're excited for this video. We're about to teach you some really cool stuff about setting an Airbnb on a budget. This is not an expensive place, but it's going to make some money. Let's go. This is my buddy Tyler. We met at Arcadia. So this video, we're going to go through taking furniture that already existed, force fitting it into three apartments and getting them listed. And we're going to teach you some things about staging that are we, that, what stuff we can teach you. So things to know about this place. What he's been able to do is take all of his furniture and make the place look good. But I want to talk about why this place looks good the way that it is. So first off, you notice how busy the space is? One thing most hosts make mistakes on, and this is where we can actually really start to get to, get to um, what we can learn here. Hosts don't utilize the whole space, which makes the place look barren in photos. So if you notice, he's got one, two, three plants. When we take a photo of the space, we're gonna take it from about back here and look how full that space is, right? Everything's utilized. We're utilizing the square footage on the wall and on the floor. The color scheme is congruent. We got blues, greens, and then grays, neutrals. He's not using any more than basically two colors, but he's got little pops which allow to do accents. So what we'll probably do when we take our photos is take this, put it somewhere like that in the middle to create a little dimensional pop in the foreground of the shot, right? Also, one thing that he did right, by the way, you can move this and just take multiple photos and keep moving this into new shots, right? You don't have to buy all the decor in the world. They're props, you can move them around. Most hosts mount the TV way too high and they don't put anything under the TV. This is one of the biggest crimes in furnishing that I see, so he also did this right. Have something under the TV, even if it's just something like that, it doesn't have to be full-blown furniture, um, and that'll make the place look better. So we've got this headboard that lost this bottom part of the frame. And so we've got this queen bed we're setting up. We bought one of these Amazon heavy metal frames because these are the best, they're sturdy. They're better than pretty much any thing that comes with a headboard, but it is more narrow than we thought. We originally bought these because it has these holes and we're just gonna put one of these through here, but it's not gonna happen. So now this headboard, also this leg's not long enough. Our solution is to put some L brackets. We're gonna put an L bracket, screw to the wall and then screw it to the headboard here. We're gonna do a, a one down here. So we're gonna have four L brackets that actually basically mount the headboard to a wall, much like a hotel would, but um, we don't have them. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna finish making the bed, finish staging the whole room, and then we're gonna back out and we're gonna take photos of the room so it can get listed, and then we'll go back and we'll finish mounting this. Moral of the story is the place doesn't have to be fully functional, it just has to be aesthetic to get the photos done because it still takes time to list it and then get a guest and then the guest checks in in the future. So if you can get your place looking ready, 90% done, but looking 100% done, you can still get the photos done. Then you can have somebody you know, edit your photos, get the place listed while you're still doing the last functional touches. And that, that's like the fastest way to get a product up to market instead of wasting time going to Lowe's now, then getting the, plate, the, the brackets put on and then four hours later getting the photos done. We can get the photos done now. And if you have a team, you can get this thing booked like a whole day faster by understanding the order of operations. Next up, making this place photo ready. We're going to grab these and they're gonna go here. Obviously I got my coffee and some stuff, so bear with me. But when we take photos that include the table, we want it staged. So just imagine this stuff isn't here. When we go take a shot, the staged table look will imply a home that is ready to be lived in. So when we do a shot this way, this will show people, oh, they've got stuff to cook with. They've got stuff to eat with. The pots and pans going on the stove, we're actually gonna do what I call a kitchen medium shot. We're gonna need one of these. Right here. We're gonna need one of these bad boys. We'll go right here, we probably put the salt and pepper, yeah, that's fine. And then, cool. So a kitchen medium shot is gonna be a photo that looks roughly like this, maybe angled slightly more down. So what this shot does is it shows that you can cook. It's got the knife, cutting board, pots and pans, oil, everything you want. Um, and that like the concept here is if you don't show it to somebody, they're not gonna know it. And we might even have we might fully pimp out everything that you could put in your kitchen medium shot. It'd be a good example of a kitchen medium shot. It shows everything to cook with, which is a competitive amenity. Longer stays need a full kitchen. When we do our coffee shot, coffee cup, 
I'm gonna to try to make this as explicit as possible. Normally what I do, and so he hasn't done it yet, I would put a label here that says sugar, right? And then I would have another one of these that says tea. I have another one that says decaf, another one that says coffee, but he's got a Keurig. So what we're gonna to try to do is when we do our coffee shot, we'll have our sugar showing, but we're also gonna to try to show in the foreground, we have a variety of coffees, something like this. So when we do our coffee photo, we're gonna to try to do something that looks kind of like this. And of course we wanna be careful for the glare here so people can actually read it, but something like this for your coffee shot, this will actually go in your photo reel too. It'll show decaf and regular coffee. And this is the way that you show people that you have coffee and tea because rule is one out of three people, one out of three decaf or tea. Thanks for hanging with me on this weird from the phone video, but I think it's helpful when staging an Airbnb that you do it the right way. It's kind of a scramble to get the place listed. Um, other tips for you is if your place is just a studio, you don't need all this, but if you have a three bedroom, four bedroom house, you start to invest more into spices, more cookware, serving platters, stuff like that. But as a studio apartment, all this right here, cutting board, small knife set, small pot and pan set, that's fine. Only tip here is we don't use Teflon because look already, see the scrapes? So once he's done with these Teflon pans, because he already owned these, we're going to switch to ceramic. Doesn't scrape, it doesn't put carcinogens into kids' food. Moms care about this. Moms care about this. So if you're gonna have a family book, they see Teflon, they see cheap Teflon, they're not gonna book with you. Or they're gonna bring their own pants, which never happens. Other staging pro tip, you will want to keep spare batteries for your TV remote. You will want to keep spare nine volt batteries for this because that'll always trip. When you take photos with a TV, I want you to turn this onto, this is not touch screen, but Disney Plus right here. You're gonna activate Disney Plus so it's showing on the screen because look, when we take a photo of the space with the bed, you'll be able to see what's on the TV. This same thing will happen for the living room here. When we go like this and take a photo of the TV, for example, if we were on HBO Max right now, House of the Dragon, we'd actually put House of the Dragon on the TV here. With Disney Plus, we'd put something like Mulan or, or um, Baby Yoda, right? This is a perfect photo right here. Take it just like that and um, p families will know that you have Disney Plus now, which implies free streaming services that'll help you get booked. Other pro tip, all of the storage here, he's doing a really good job. He's got everything labeled, but we're gonna actually change this. We're gonna change this because these could go on a shelf properly labeled and a faster access for housekeepers, and this is overkill for one studio. He has three apartments in the neighborhood, so we're gonna get a centralized storage location, and all of his overflow all the stuff that he might like need big time, like bigger unit stuff, will go into that storage. He should also even have a spare TV in storage. When you have three, four, five units, you have all your cleaning supplies, an extra TV, even extra furniture. So he might even have an extra mattress, extra bed frame, extra accent chair, extra plants, extra plates, cups, bowls, and stuff like that, all in one centralized storage unit. Because imagine trying to keep those extras per unit. The truth is at scale, things break. You're gonna break wine glasses, you're going to end up getting stains on a mattress that you need to get out. You could get it out in a week, but blood stains on a mattress, you won't be able to fix it between reservations. So swapping stuff out fast and then working on it offsite is gonna be better. Having triple of everything, including TVs, is expensive, but broken TVs happen so rarely, you only need one extra TV per like 30 or 40 doors, right? So we're gonna get a centralized storage unit for all this stuff so as housekeepers can say, hey, this is broken, we'll swap it. So next up, we're gonna take photos of this place. Airbnb requires you upload five photos, but in order to improve your SEO ranking, Airbnb's algorithm wants you to have at least eight. Now, some really small listings like that may not get eight full photos, like without being redundant, which is a thing that I wanna to talk to you about here too by the end of this video. But if you don't have eight good photos of your listing, just go find some neighborhood of photos or some like location dependent stuff, because likely if you have a small studio like this, that um, can't get eight photos, you're probably doing it because you wanna be in a location-driven area. So you're gonna be able to find neighborhood photos that work for you just fine. So for today's photography, I'm using the Fujifilm GFX-S 102 megapixel camera with a 17 millimeter lens. This is a $7,000 camera. No, you should not use this camera to take your photos. You can use a GH5 or a GH4 or a G9. 
Um, I like GH5Ss because they're exactly 4K worth of pixels, and that's what I shoot most of my YouTube videos with. But this is just my landscape camera that I used in Banff, and it happened to be in my bag. So we're gonna shoot with this one. This is going to be a basic living room shot. We are, we're like less than TV height, right? This is our perspective. That is three feet tall at the most. So camera maybe, maybe three feet tall. You notice it's kind of level to the ground, maybe even angled a couple degrees up. What we want out of this shot is we want to get some ceiling and we want to get some floor. So the shot's good. Now I'm going to move this to be right down center line. So now I am basically center with the living room. I'm going to shoot from here. So this is going to be the first shot we take. And I'm going to show you how to do a bracketed shot. So we want our camera set to manual. We want to get our exposure right. Right now I'm using an aperture of 11. For real estate photography, you want a more closed off aperture so everything's in focus. And then this is my rack focus here. This one shows me how far away we're focusing. I think that's three meters and that's infinite. So we're gonna go about three meters out. This is gonna be our focal. And so here we are. Now, my ISO is at 800, which is okay. You can even do it lower, um, but I'm gonna take slightly faster shots too. So my first shot for my bracketed shot, we're actually gonna increase the shutter speed to be faster than it should be. I'm gonna go 50. See how dark this gets? We actually do 125 for one shot. This is the whole point. You'll notice up here, the window here is nice. So that's what we want first, this window shot at 160. Then we're gonna go down to say 50. Take another. Then we're gonna go down to like really blown out. Six. So what we've just done is we've taken a photo of the living room three times. One where the photo's really dark, one where the photo's more medium, and one where the photo's really bright. I'm gonna take this into Lightroom and we're gonna jam all three photos together and just make one photo out of it. And what that does is it gives us a more even exposure and gives us that high quality, better homes and gardens look. This next shot of this living room is going to have House of the Dragon on the screen because that's pretty popular. Again, we're gonna do one shot at a very fast shutter speed of 160. Same settings. Drop it down, I believe we did 80 next, right? One more, and down to 10. Now these three shots will merge together to make the one shot here that we see. And I'm gonna do this for all of our shots, but to make your life easy, I'm just gonna show you where I'm shooting next without doing the bracketing. This is the kitchen medium shot, but it is too low, if you notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna pick the camera up to about this level to take the shot. Now, if we try to take a photo of the coffee station from here, see how, how wide that is? We don't like that. We want a more, tight shot on this. So I'm actually gonna use just my phone camera and I'm gonna come right here, like I said before, and obviously move the hot pan out the way, but I'm gonna take a shot that's just like this with the foreground. I could even steal it from this video as we speak and this would be a good enough coffee station shot. Next, I'm gonna take a shot that includes the table staged, as I said, the kitchen in the background. Make sure all the cabinets are closed and put the knife back from the cutting board on there so that way you're not missing a knife in that shot. So far, that's five photos. We've got two living room photos. We've got a kitchen wide shot, which is the one that included the table. We had a kitchen medium that shows all the cookware, and we've got a coffee station shot. That's five, next to the bedroom and bathroom. For the bedroom shot, we're gonna take two, one that doesn't include the TV wall, and one that does, because in his case, he has a TV in the bedroom. If you don't have a TV in the bedroom, there's really no reason to take a photo that includes it. Now, we do have to be careful, because those blinds need to get fixed before the photo, otherwise I'd have to Photoshop them out, and that's a mess. Other things to know, this place isn't clean yet. And what you need to know, this place doesn't even have a made bed all the way. This is the mattress, this is a duvet, and this is a flat sheet. I'm making what looks like a bed, so that way I can take photos. Now, this is gonna be wrinkled, but I can get that out in Photoshop. As long as I tug it enough, you can apply a blur, or um, you can actually mask over it using a filter to make it seem smooth. So the housekeepers are gonna come through and make this place beautiful, but I'm just here to take the photos and get out. And like I said before, when we talk about the L brackets with the head headboard, this doesn't have to be functional yet. It just has to be aesthetic to take these photos. See, look, looks so nice from here. And notice that a uh, plant from the living room is making its cameo again in the shot. Like I said, they're props. You can move them everywhere. For the bathroom, I prefer to draw the curtain so people can see the shower head. It just makes the space more full. And you know, I really don't know the answer to this, guys. <sighs> Toilet seat up or down? I feel like everybody has their own opinions on this and I really don't have the answer. Um, dealer's choice, whether or not you wanna leave the toilet seat up for your shots. Now, this lens is super wide. Um, and obviously, as you notice, my exposure is on the bright side. For a bathroom, brighter looks cleaner, just go for it. You don't have to bracket the bathroom shot so much because 
what is it? It's all interior force lighting. So I might do two bracket shots, one that is super bright. So I might do two super, like bracket shots, one that's super bright like this. And one that's like is a little, little less bright. Now, if you don't have a wide enough lens for this, you can actually use your, your iPhone and do the, a pano shot. And actually, let me take one for my phone right now. This pano shot will take a few tries because sometimes it gets a little rigid. Just keep doing it until you get a good clean one and then you can kind of crop it to a normal format. And this is how you can get a bathroom shot in a really tight space. Now, surprise, surprise, we had five in the living room kitchen, right? We had two in the bedroom and one in the bathroom. That's eight, we're good. But again, if you don't have eight shots because you just can't seem to get eight good shots, then go and get some neighborhood photos. Now, the reason why you don't want to have unnecessary photos just for the sake of hitting eight um, that don't look good is because your photos are what talks people into your space, but the photos are also what talks people right out of your space. Um, let me just give you a few examples here. Let me just pop them up of photos that don't do a good job because sure, you have five photos of your living room, but if two of them look bad, it's kind of like a dating profile where some photos look good on somebody and then two of them kind of look wonky. You're like, this person may not be what they seem. So you want to remove any photos that kind of ruin the magic of the experience of, you know, of course, like checking your place and checking into your place. Make sure all your photos are good. Oh, P.S. This is a co-host property. That's right. Yeah, so I'm doing co-hosting now. So we're adding five this week. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, Texas. We co-host in Texas. We'll see you. Oh, and by the way, our cleaning fees are cheaper than everybody else's because we hire our own staff. That's one reason to use us instead of another co-host because cleaning fees are crazy out here. So situation in the second unit, just we're gonna push this in here in the photography section. This is all in the even when we use some of the lighting like this, it just doesn't work. So what I did is I shut all the lights off and in a normal setting, let me flip this. With our normal settings, this is how dark it is. So what I did is I just went in and I made a really long exposure like this. And now it looks like a perfectly well lit shot. Just these cameras can keep the eye open for as long as you want. This was a four second exposure to get the kitchen shot we wanted just because this is so dark. But if we turn any of these lights on, it'd be uneven. And what you want is even lighting more than anything else. In the second apartment, it's roughly the same. So we're not even gonna take any photos of this bathroom. We already have the shot we need. We can just use the same one. The curtain's different, but that's really the only difference. If you wanna really nitpick, just buy all the same curtains if you do 10 apartments and you can do, again, like I said, it's based on the floor plan. These floor plans are identical, so the bathroom's identical. We don't need a new shot for what is essentially an identical bathroom. All right, guys, now watch my video about creating a listing next. So that way you can put it all together and you can have your listing launched and you can make some money. And after you watch the create a listing video, you're going to watch some of my pricing strategy videos after that. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm.